Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And today we have a ridiculous, let me say it better, a redonkulous episode for you because the secret pack is here and unveiled. And so over 700 of you are rolling with me right now. Except that one guy who emailed me, he's already drank three of the wines. I was like, he's like, don't worry, I saved one. Pretty interesting, but pretty awesome. Um, I'm very excited about this episode. I think we've got some very interesting selections for you. Uh, little pinky pink action. Uh-huh, so fun, I wanna like, get, get oh, there we go. Um, just really, really excited about these selections and, uh, and uh, I'm just downright pumped to do the episode. Two quick house cleaning things first though, right off the bat, Mott, link it up. All of you who we've sent wristbands to, you've got to email Mott the picture. See Mott at winelibrary.com. Mott, link up your email. And more importantly, link up all the people that have sent us wristbands. Yeah, the little link, the swag pack, you know? The swag, you know, link. You, look, you didn't know we had that? Link it up, Mott. Um, so that everybody can be motivated to send in their wristbands. So please do that. I mean, we send them to you. We didn't charge you. All I asked for was a picture and you haven't come through. And number two, I wanna give everybody a quick little apology. I am way behind on my shout outs. I will try to accomplish that over the next two days, but today we're going to focus on the absolutely interesting anniversary six pack, uh, secret pack, excuse me, it's a four pack. No, you didn't get gypped out of two bottles. And uh, I'm excited about them because they're a very diverse group of wines, and let's get right into them. So, first and foremost, like I mentioned, hopefully you've had them open for about as long as we have, which is you know in the ballpark of a couple of hours. Um, I'm going room temperature on the rosé and on the, uh, Tokai Dry Ferment, and we have yesterday's wine decanting for over 24 hours. That was the Michael Ware wine that absolutely went crazy. We're gonna have to bring that out, Mott, and let everybody get excited about that. But let's get into the first thing. Zoom in, Mott. Don't go anywhere. Get in this little wink. This is the Le Tendence Rosé 2006. It is a Bordeaux Rosé made from Cabernet and Cabernet Franc. Um, it is a very interesting project. Uh, it is a screw top $20 rosé and so we are going completely outside the box and this is all about expanding your palate. You know what the two golden rules are of WLTV. They are very simple. One, trust your own palate. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to Robert Parker, Stephen Tanzer, Alan Meadows. Don't listen to anybody. Listen to your mouth. Listen to your pal. Shake your pal's hand, embrace your inner palate. If you like Riesling and it's sweet, don't let anybody make fun of you. Embrace it and enjoy it. And number two, try different things. I think a lot of you are starting to really get the embracing your own palate and not being ashamed, building up your wine self-esteem, not worrying about what other people say, but I still find that you're catering within the same circles. You don't think I'm paying attention to some of the things you're buying and some of the pictures you're sending in and what's in the background. I'm scheming, I'm paying attention, I'm zooming in, I am all over you like white on rice and I'm telling you vaniacs out there, we need to be drinking more rosé. Uh-huh, the pink stuff. And it's not just for the ladies. Actually, a lot of guys like pink. Anyway, but here's what's going on. We are drinking a very serious rosé at a very serious price point. One of the most expensive rosés, besides the wines that come out of Bondol, uh, that I've come across at 20 bones, very pricey, but kind of interesting. Now, what's really cool about this is, this is your secret pack, but I've not had the wines either. So now everybody's gonna say, well, wait a minute, what's, that's kind of a problem. Why are you just sending these wines? But you know, I have, I have feel that some of these are gonna do well. So let's see what's going on. Sniffy sniff time. And the one thing I really wanna do is, you know, have you come along this journey with me. So, you know, swirl around as much as you can. I think that's a major part. I think a lot of times people are like, oh, I don't get a lot on the nose. Well, that's because you pour it. You know what? It's a real opportunity, we're all together. You, you know, you pour it and you, Smell it. What, what I think that is doing is not giving you the biggest opportunity. So I'm big on the swirl. I mean, really swirl the living crizap out of it and then give it a nice snippy snip. I think you're getting some nice light berries. That's a pretty tight nose. You're probably not smelling too, too much. I do get a little strawberry. Little hints of raspberries out as well, excuse me. Um, but very, very light on the nose. Let's give it a whirl. Now, what do you get on there? Couple things that I'm excited about. One, I want to establish to all of you, many of you have never had a dry rosé. 
So what you'll notice is, this is a very dry wine. Very, very dry. Heavy. Number two, heavy. This has a lot of weight. Almost Chardonnay-like weight on the body. As a matter of fact, if I blindfolded you and let you taste this, a lot of you would think this is white wine. Maybe even Sancerre, heavy, white, crisp, clean wine. These wines are absolutely amazing. Four, shellfish. If you like Kumamoto's or Olympias, West Coast, baby. Throw up the dub, the West Coast oysters, the small ones. This is a great pairing. This has great complexity, nice acidity, but you notice, not razor sharp. It is not cutting your tongue. There's some acidity there, but it's not overwhelming your entire palate. What I like about this wine is it's clean and it's textbook, but it's got a lot more weight than most rosés, and that's why I put it in here. I wanted somebody to have the opportunity to see that you can get very full, almost like white wine qualities in rosés, and they're great alternatives. They're fun. Come on, it's fun, right, Mom? I mean, they're fun. And they're good. I really like the, um, almost like cherries with the leaves on it. You know the cherries you see in the, in the uh, slot machines and they've got the stem on it with a leaf? Like cherry, cherry, lemon, god darn it. Anyway, those cherries are coming through in your mouth because you get a little of the green leafness. Do you get that? Do you get a little bit of the green leaves along with the cherries? It's pretty rad actually. Some people may not like it. It's a very controversial wine. To me this wine could have been better. I was expecting a little bit more based on the Chinon I had from this producer, based on one of the Southwest Fr France wines I've had from this producer. They have a very interesting line of all these smiley faces. Um, so I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'm very excited because I know a lot of you are experiencing this kind of white wine. Excuse me, see? Rosé, see that little slip? A wine like this for the first time. And I think it's going to open your mind to crab you know, crab, little crab dishes, just a lot of aperitifs this summertime, especially as the spring is now. I smell the spring coming, it's coming. And so, you know, come Memorial Day through Labor Day, enormous amounts of opportunity to drink rosé wines and not be scared of them. They're dry, they're complex, they're full-bodied, and they can do a lot. This can do a whole lot with some Gruber. This can do a whole lot with some skate, flounder, sushi. I mean, there's some pairings that this wine is going to bring the thunder with. To me today, it's showing like an 88-point wine. Respectable, overpriced at 20 bones. I apologize, but it's definitely accomplishing what I was hoping for. Good start to the show. Let's move on, and this is gonna be the highlight of the show. I'm gonna be really blunt and honest with you. This will be the highlight of the show. This is some wild, wild stuff. This is the Chateau de Relza 2006 Tokai Dry. It is a ferment, which is also known in Slovenia as Sapone, uh, and in Austria as Mosler. So, also planted in the Czech Republic, the former Soviet Union. This is a grape that is very Eastern European ferment. Usually, usually my friends, used as late harvest and then Botrytis is added and then you get your dessert wines out of Hungary, the Tokais. But ferment is a white wine grape. A lot of you were worried about the screw capsule a lot, were emailing me before. No worries, that's just how it rolls. And now, this is the fun part, give this wine a sniffy sniff. Admit it, that is electricity, right? I mean, God, I'm gonna get even more in here. Mott, this nose is ripping fun. I mean, I really want you to get in there. Remember the whirl, the really interesting whirl. Now this whirl was in at 14 bones, Richard Todd's number, former Jet quarterback. Tell me you're not getting that key lime pie coming through here with a little bit of like banana skin on top of it lemon juice, just gorgeous aromatics, and throw some like almost graham crackers on top of that. Just great stuff coming on. Oh man, this nose is worth the price of admission. Absolutely fun, this came through. These are always aromatic. I had the 05 of this and loved. Here's the 06. I'm just getting a little bit of like Band-Aid as well. Do you get a little Band-Aid on there? But the key lime pie and the lemons are just so obnoxiously obvious. Obnoxiously obvious. Let's give it a whirl. Tell me, tell me, 
This is where we need an interactive live show, huh? This is sensationally good. Little hint of sweetness, right? Do you get it? Just a tad. Almost like custard pie, a little creme brulee up in your grill piece. A very serious effort from a very simplistic kind of grape, from a very old world, classic part of the world. Hungarian wines are extremely underrated in today's market. This is lemon, lime, Sprite creme brulee. All the way, great creaminess, great body weight. I'm loving this wine. This is the kind of white wine that is expanding your palate. For people who are drinking Rieslings, Gruneveltliners, Pinot Grigios, Albarinos, Ferment needs to become part of your arsenal. You've gotta have it. I don't know why I did that. That was like weapons, right? Like a party. I mean, needs to become of your part of your wine arsenal. Four U.S. bones and it's ripping through my palate. I'm scoring this wine 90 points, an absolute value in my book, something that I highly recommend people seek out. It needs to be sought out. It is a completely monstrous effort from a grape varietal that a lot of people, I mean, raise your hand right now. Comment, quick question of the day, part one. How many of you had ferment? Tell the truth. I mean, dry ferment. Um, really excited. Even better than the 05. So this has really been a home run for me. Riesling-esque, but different. Um, I drink it as Mosler in, um, in Austria quite a bit as well. This is great. I mean, this is what it's all about. When a wine comes through, very exciting. Uh, let's move on. The Mas de la Barben. Um, this is a very interesting blend of Grenache, Syrah, and Cinso. Um, from our very lovely place of Languedoc. Uh, Languedoc is really, really a big part of what we've been talking about on the Thunder Show over the last month or so. I'm very excited about what's going on in Southwest, Southeast France, just all those little areas. 15 US dollars, and let's see what's going on here. Sniffy sniff time. Green peppers, tobacco, Chili pepper coming through. Little horse manure. That's right, that's not Johnny, your dog over there pooping in the corner, no folks. You're watching the Thunder Show and you're getting poop up all the, in your nosy. The sniffy sniff is giving you a little dirty diaper, a little manure, black pepper, chili pepper. A little hint of greenness, almost a little cinnamon kind of component coming through. Do you get that as well? A little cinnamon. And some strawberries. Very interesting, great bouquet. What you expect from this part of the world. Languedoc is bringing thunder all day long. It's value levels, 15 bones. Let's give it a whirl. Poked up and hit me. It's a little disgusting. Really new world mouthfeel on the attack. Great brightness. Initially, it's sensational. I think a lot of you like, uh-oh. Then it gets pretty dry. It's a young wine, even though it's a 2003. It was hot in that vintage, if you remember. Great texture, though. Great silkiness and length. Um, all in all, a roller coaster of a wine. Starts off phenomenal. Dips a little bit in the mid-palate. Comes on a little bit here at the end. A nice, I like the nice long finish. Great bright fruit, a little light. Do you feel like how it's disappearing off the palate? That concerns me a little bit, but all in all, some nice structure. I like the dark black high cocoa percentage chocolate on the finish, wrapped around almost like a uh, pigs in a blanket. You get a little bit of that like hot dog, bacon, dark chocolate, raspberry sauce from IHOP thing going on, all up mixed in together and smushed up and looking all dirty, but kind of kind of cute, right? Like, mm, not bad. All in all, this is an 89 point wine. Just missing that oomph factor to get crazy. The 2001 of this was a better wine, that's why 
decided to use the 03. I thought it would be New World a little bit more because of the heat of the vintage. I think you can taste along and see the flavors. Notice how it's like fruity but kind of light. I mean, there's something about the finish that is kind of bothering me and ultimately not allowing me to go completely crazy on the wine. Kind of an easy drinking wine. I think a lot of you are gonna enjoy this wine for its simplicity and its fun factor. Um, all in all, could have been better. Um, let's move on. Uh, the Megonate 2004 Granasha Selection, 17 US dollars. 91 points, Jay Miller, um, very small producer of 80 year old plus Grenache grapes, uh, 80 year old vines producing Grenache, which Grenache is just great, great stuff. I'm a huge fan of the Grenache grape, um, especially in the Rhone. I love my Shatnaf the Pops. Get me the Michael Weir bar. Thank you. So we'll be next. Let's see what's going on here. Snippy snip time. Hello, New World. <laughs> this actually smells, reminds me exactly the smell when you open a new pair of Nike Airs, white on white, like Rick Ross, actually. Pretty interesting. Very product driven, plastic, you know, manufactured, loaded with sun kissed kind of flavors, almost like Skittles, too. A little rainbow action. Let's ride the rainbow right now, because we're going to. Interesting. Let's give it a whirl. And now you're gonna learn something. Because I have a method to my madness. New world, old world. A little bit more than new world than it needs to be, but old world, new world. Taste them side by side. Right now you're gonna like me. I know you're sitting at home right now and you're gonna be like, this is a great opportunity. Grenache based wines tasting completely different. Not completely, completely as they can, but absolutely different. This is very high in fruit, over the top, overripe. You can absolutely taste the absolute difference. I get strawberry for days. Nice bitter tannins. Put this away for three or four years, it's gonna get a lot better. I actually don't mind this as a fruit bomb. It's actually a well-balanced fruit bomb. Um, believe it or not, on its finish. It's actually doing a very good job. It's starting to catch me a little bit. It's so vibrant, but it does a really great job kind of toning itself down. Almost like the Thunder Show Mott. This is almost like me, right? We explode, everybody leaves, but if the maniacs that stay, they get a good solid show. You know, we calm it down a little bit. We'll throw a couple jabs out there, but we really get, really, we really get focused into the wine. Dark chocolate, I get a nice asparagus head on the finish, which I like quite a bit. White asparagus, not green. I eat a lot of white asparagus. Extremely vibrant. I get cherry juice that I just picked up for the first time. So this wine continues to evolve. I think Jay Miller was on the bone on this one. This is a new world wine that I can really deal with. I'm gonna score this wine 90 points. I'm on board. It's a very solid effort. And I really like how it explodes and then calms down. How can't I? Finally. I hope you enjoyed that. And please rewind any parts you'd like. Um, there was just, that was a lot of fun to taste through. I hope you kind of stopped and started. Thundercats, come on. You guys get everywhere. Let's give it a little bit of a rinse. Now, if you remember, if this is the first time you're watching, you can watch yesterday's show. Just scroll down, and yesterday's show is right below. This wine was extremely controversial. Where's the bottle? Oh, thank you, Mott. Appreciate it. We're gonna actually do something that a viewer emailed me to do. We're gonna taste it out of the bottle, 24 hours later, and out of the decanter. And you can see how we tasted it yesterday. Pretty cool, right, Mott? We're coming through. Finally, I'm gonna pour a little bit out for all the homies that can't be with us, all the maniacs that are missing today's show. It's a busy, it's five days a week, it's tough. Sniffy sniff. I smell more basil. Wow. I smell absolutely more basil. This smells like the stuffing of a turkey. Just enormous amounts of basil and uh, celery and just so green. Let's give it a whirl. No comparison to yesterday. Totally different. Totally different. 
It's opened up dramatically more. Still pretty dry in the finish, but considerably smoother around the edges. Grapefruit, I'm getting a lot more grape and plum components than I got yesterday that I didn't taste. A little pine cone action. Why not, right? For the kids. I mean, just really, really interesting. Clearly, from what I remember from yesterday, it's a lot more open, a lot more approachable, great basil greeny nose, but much less vegetal on the flavor profile and much more in fruit. And this is a time that I can sit on a soapbox and really diss what I do. It is incredibly obnoxious to sit and pop wines for a couple of hours without decanting, without food, pour them, shotgun through them for three minutes and give them a score and a review. I get it. It's what I do for a living. It's how we make decisions. But it is unfair to the workers, the farmers, the vineyard managers, the winemakers, the wine owners to do that. It just is. Wines evolve. It's very personal. It's like the mood you're in, right? The wine that you tasted on vacation that tasted so awesome. Yeah, you were relaxed and your Blackberry was off and you're with the people you loved. You came back to America and it sucked and you think they're giving us different stuff. They're not giving us different stuff, guys. It's mindset. It's the moment in time you're drinking that wine with whom and how. And so wine does not to belong to be judged the way we do it. I love doing it. It's part of our culture. I understand. This is why I'm so torn about scores. When I ever talk about dropping scores, a lot of you, I mean, Thousands of you email me and say, please keep doing it. I'm really a service. I'm a stepping stool to a new wine culture, I hope. Uh, and so I just want you to know that there's a big conflict within myself. I mean, it is so unfair what we do to these wines. Not just me, the entire culture of the wine industry in America. We're a fast moving society. I get it. But these wines, these grapes, this glorious product deserves better. Anyway. This is really good. A lot better than yesterday. I would score it higher than yesterday and I'm really enjoying it. But now, let's get real serious. This has been decanted for 24 hours. A little rinse. I like that little rant I just did. It's from the heart, Mont. Hip and heart, baby. Hip and heart. Snippy sniff. The green vegetables are still rocking. Basil, I mean, it's just there for days. Let's give it a whirl. lefty. I go both ways. Anyway, it's actually not that much more opened up than the bottle that was corked. Clearly, totally more approachable, less tannins, less dryness, less puckering up than yesterday. 24 hours completely changed this wine. So if anything, and I like this wine, this is a very good wine. Canada guys, I'm telling you, what's going on in Canada is gonna freak you out over the next 10 years. They're going to be very sought after wines and very exceptional wines and I might be making a little trip up there. The fact of the matter is this. Try different things. Try different things and try different things. And trust yourself and most of all, understand over time with a meal, six hours later, the right mindset, so many things impact wine because it's a personal experience and no score or review or critic should pigeonhole it. Make it an experience, enjoy it, and most of all, enjoy it with the people you love, friends and family. That's why I love wine. It brings people together. Question of the day. Did you like the show today? Just a very simple one. Because you, with a little bit of me, a lot of you vaniacs, we are really, really, really having a chance to change the wine world.